Hi, I'm Diane Dagnan. I'm here at the United Methodist General Conference in Portland, Oregon. You'll certainly get to know uh, the Reverend Laura Jaquith Bartlett, who is the Worship and Music Director here at General Conference, over her work the next two weeks, but we thought we'd bring her to the Digital Lounge to give you a little taste of what's in store. Her job is to create worship experiences both intimate and grand, and she's been designing experiences for more than 20 years. Laura, I'd like to welcome you to the Digital Lounge. Thank you so much, Diane. I know that this is a really busy time for you and you've got a lot um, in store. So, uh, you've got a big variety of worship experiences, I noticed, in looking through what you've got planned. Do you have one thing that you're uh, looking forward to as one of your favorites? <laughs> well, it's interesting you would start off with probably one of the hardest questions because <laughs> I think they're all my favorites. If I had to pick um, one of them to uh, choose a couple of highlights. Interestingly, it might be uh, the service on Wednesday morning, May 18th, uh, because that's one of the more unusual ones. The theme of that particular day in worship, each day we talk about um, going, in terms of therefore go, how is it we are going with Jesus, but on Wednesday the 18th, it's that evil is going too which we all know that, but we don't really like to talk about it, especially in worship. Um, Matthew, as in the Gospel of Matthew, is not afraid to talk about that. So we're lifting up a scripture in Matthew that deals with evil, but we'll start that service off uh, with water, lots of water, that will eventually help us to remember the salvific power of our own baptismal waters. So when we are encountering evil in the world, we know that we already have the tools to combat that evil through our baptism in Jesus Christ. So that service is going to be um, unique, but I think really, really wonderful. I know there's a lot of variety planned in the worship. How do you, how do you go about um, deciding what you're going to do, and do you think that everybody will find something here for them? I do think so, just because of the amount of variety. We have worked really hard on planning worship services that um, we hope are awesome, but they're not performances. They are, um, they are times for God's people to be together worshiping God. And that means that um, you as a person in the pew are not just sitting back watching somebody else do something. You are participating, whether it's by singing. You might be singing a song in your own language. You might be singing a song in someone else's language. Um, it's praying uh, on your own as well as with others. It's um, participating in rituals that may make you move in different ways. We'll have people moving their whole bodies. Uh, so there will be lots of ways for people to participate. Not everyone is going to like everything, but that's not actually the point of worship. The, worship, the point of worship is to bring us together as the body of Christ in relationship with God, empowered by the Holy Spirit. I know that bringing people together from all around the world uh, was one of your goals to, to, to bring that all together as we become a more global church and live into that. Um, will people see things they don't expect? Um, how, how will you bring all these different cultures and experiences together? That was a big challenge and it was on the front of our minds constantly as the team planned and designed the worship. Um, let me tell you just a little bit about opening worship because I think that's a good illustration of how we really wanted to say we are a global denomination and when we to come together we are a global body. So the very first thing that happens in opening worship is actually a welcome to this land from the people who were here before any of us Methodists were here at all. Um, and so there are native peoples from the Pacific Northwest who will give an official welcome to all of us at General Conference. And then uh, following that welcome, we will have greetings, Christian greetings, from people literally all over the world, uh, videos of missionaries that are serving in all different countries, speaking whatever might be the traditional Christian greeting in their own context and in that language. And those will be interspersed with delegates and others who are right here on site also giving similar greetings. And then we'll start saying Alleluia, Alleluia, just this sort of chaos of Alleluia's all around the room, which eventually the band will kind of um, help us morph this chaos of Alleluia's into one unison sung Alleluia. And you notice, of course, that Alleluia, Latin, is not a language that any of us speaks, but we're all singing together in that language. And then the, um, uh, the processional hymn, Holy, 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 one that we believe 
nearly everyone will know, we sing the first verse in French all together, the second verse in Kiswahili, third verse in Portuguese, and the fourth verse in English. So right from the get-go, we want to not only model, but um, um, allow all of us to participate in the reality that we are, in fact, a global denomination, but we are one body united in Christ. So you've been working on this for a long time, and it's the eve of the big event. It's yes. all starting to come together. So are you feeling calm, feeling anxious? Yes. <laughs> Um, both, I would say not anxious. Um, there's the, the adrenaline surge of, oh my goodness, it's really happening. Um, I have been thrilled through the whole two years in working with a really amazing design team uh, and then this great team of musicians. And now for the first time ever, we're all together in one room. In fact, um, just a couple of hours before coming here to the Digital Lounge, uh, the whole team assembled in one room for prayer um, and just celebrating that we're all here. It was so exciting to me to hear the excitement in their voices saying, we're here, we're here, we're ready to do this together. We've been called by God to do this. So part of what keeps me calm is the fact that each of these amazing people are expertly doing their jobs. If I had to have my hands on every single piece, uh, I'd have walked long ago, but they're all doing exactly what they need to be doing. Uh, and it's just so far working great. Are you a perfectionist? Will it bother you if there's a hiccup here and there? I am a perfectionist. That's not always a good thing. Um, I think usually it can be used for good, not evil. Um, certainly, uh, it's not going to be healthy for me to stress out, out over mistakes, but I've been doing worship for a long, long time, and um, I, I don't think I've ever um, experienced a worship service that went exactly according to my plan. Uh, the, the challenge, and we've been working on this intentionally for a long time, the challenge is to, um, to take those, those hiccups, <laughs> those, those problems, and um, acknowledge that, hey, this isn't what we planned, but this is a chance for the Holy Spirit to break in. There's a Japanese bell outside the Oregon Convention Center, uh, surrounded by roses, and it has a sign on the outside that says, this bell will warn without Ring, uh, without warning, and I think that on the top of all of our worship scripts that are detailed down to the nanosecond, I need to put a big yellow headline that says, the Holy Spirit may break in without warning, so that we will be prepared when those mistakes happen. We know it's a time for the Holy Spirit to come and break in. Well, it sounds like it's going to be an amazing experience, and I'm really looking forward to it. I've I want to thank you for taking some time out of this really busy day to come by and visit us and tell us a little bit about what we can expect. And I'd like to thank you all for visiting us here at the Digital Lounge. Please check back for more interviews with newsmakers and folks behind the scene here at General Conference.